So I recently upgraded my AMD FX 6300 to an FX 8350. Now I know a lot of you are saying right now, well EG, why in the hell didn't you just get a Ryzen? And I mean, the answer is pretty straightforward. If I were to upgrade to a Ryzen, I would have to buy a new motherboard, new RAM, and it would cost like 300 or something dollars. And I know that people are going to post prices and things in the comments. And if you can find them for good prices, that's awesome. But I got this FX 8350 for $75, which is pretty damn cheap. And I figure if I'm going to be upgrading my CPU, why not throw a benchmark in there? Now this benchmark is going to be quite a bit different than previous benchmarks I've done. I'm going to be using the Feronix test suite. And we're going to start straight away with the straight up CPU benchmarks and the numbers. So real quick in the background, that's Battlefield 4. I'm playing it on OpenSUSE Leap 15 using DXVK 0.90. I've done some live streams playing it on my other channel, EG Plays, which you should totally subscribe to. And I talk about how I set it up over there too. And without further ado, let's talk about Crafty version 25.2. Now Crafty is a chess engine or a chess benchmark. I thought that that was a pretty interesting one. I think it did a pretty okay job bouncing the load between the cores. You can see that there is a difference, albeit a small difference between the two CPUs. Now keep in mind the FX 6300 has six cores. The FX 8350 has eight. It's just a two core improvement, so. The next test is 7-Zip Compression version 16.2. Now the difference between the 6 and 8 cores here is much more pronounced. You can see that the FX 8350 got significantly better scoring. In fact, it's almost a third better than the FX 6300. It's also worth pointing out that the FX 6300 runs at 3.5 GHz. The FX 8350 runs at 4.0 GHz, so not only does it have more cores, but it's also a higher clock speed. Next up for the CPU benchmarks, we've got X264 encoding. Now this benchmark is particularly interesting to me because this is the codec I use to render my videos. You can see again that the eight core processor got quite a bit better score, which is pretty nice because that should mean that I'll be able to render my videos quicker. Not that they take very long to begin with. Next up, we've got GNU PG two gigabyte file encryption. Not much of a difference here at all. With the FX6300, it took 20 seconds to encrypt two gigs. With the FX8350, it took 19 seconds, so hardly a difference at all, really. Next in line, we've got Graphics Magic with the operation of Sharpen. There was like six different operations here and I wanted to keep it simple, so I chose Sharpen. The eight core processor was able to pull off 71 iterations per minute. The six core processor only got 52, so that's actually a pretty big difference. Next up, we've got a test called AO Bench, which is an ambient occlusion benchmark. Now these results actually surprised me. I was expecting a greater difference. While the FX8350 was faster, it wasn't faster by a whole lot. Now the last CPU benchmark is called TTSIOD 3D Renderer. This is a cool benchmark because it's a 3D renderer that uses only your CPU. And it does a pretty damn good job of using your CPU because going from six cores to eight cores gave us a huge boost. Now that finishes up all of the CPU specific benchmarks I chose for this video. But now we're gonna take a look at some actual game benchmarks, which I think everybody can agree those are the most interesting ones. So let's get started. We'll start things off with the only synthetic benchmark I used here, UniEngine Valley. Now I'm pretty damn impressed that this graphics engine didn't appear to use any CPU. I mean, I'm sure that it used some, but given that the FX8350 has two more cores and is faster, it didn't improve the score at all is pretty damn impressive. Now you could also say that my GTX 760 is the bottleneck and that's probably true. But yeah, the CPU upgrade had no effect on this one. Next in line is Hitman and yep, the same story. I'm actually really surprised about this one because Hitman runs badly on Linux with my hardware. It uses OpenGL, which is a shame. I feel like Hitman could really benefit from the Vulkan treatment. But as you can see, upgrading the CPU had like no effect at all. When I was playing the game here, it felt like it was running better or smoother, but it didn't reflect in the benchmark. So it's probably just placebo. Next up is Dota 2. Now backwards from Hitman, I'm really surprised that the CPU had any effect on this at all considering I used the Vulkan renderer. Vulkan is supposed to take full advantage of your graphics hardware and apparently it didn't or something, I'm not really sure. By the way, I totally suck at Dota and I was playing with bots and the AI is so wretchedly bad. At least half the time I would get into battle and all of my allies would just abandon me. 
Next, we've got a cool little open source game called Xenotic. To be honest, I was totally expecting this one to be very heavy on the CPU because it's using an old Quake engine, but no, apparently not. Upgrading my CPU had very little effect on this game. Now, obviously the game runs really, really well, so it's not really that big of a difference at all, but yeah, I'm pleasantly surprised. And last on the list is Metro Last Light Redux. Man, talk about a creepy game. Look at these spiders. Ugh. Changing out the CPU actually made a pretty good difference. I mean, that's a solid 10 frames a second. Now, granted, we're already above 60 frames a second, so I guess it doesn't really matter, but still the graphics engine seems to appreciate the improvement. And yeah, that was the last benchmark on my list. So if you want to see this benchmark in all of its glory, you can find a link to open benchmark where I've uploaded all of this stuff in the description. This is my first time playing around and really using the Phoenix test suite. I'm sure I did things wrong and you know, I want to make a video about my experiences with it because there are some good things and bad things and I don't want to make this video too long. But if you haven't used it, I would say check it out. It's actually a pretty darn cool tool. I learned some cool stuff from this benchmark and it was actually pretty fun to do. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making it. If you did, be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Check out the description for how to support me. I appreciate all of your support and thanks for watching.